It all started here, 35 years ago. Hitsville, USA, the home of Motown Records and some of the most memorable music ever recorded. These were Hitsville's biggest stars. But a decade after the heyday of Motown, some of its lesser known performers were becoming legends in the clubs of the Midlands and the Northwest. They called their music Northern Soul. There's always some fond memories connected with the Northern Soul Motown sound. And everybody that was a part of it tries to do anything and everything that they can to keep it alive. And it, it, keeps, it keeps surviving. And that just goes to show you the legacy of the music. Now, new fans are discovering the scene. And many of the old timers are back. Looking a little older, perhaps, but just as enthusiastic. It's the music, we love records. People you meet and so friendly. The atmosphere, the people, the music, just everything. You cannot beat it anywhere else. If the music's inside you, it grabs you and there's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to keep going and it drags you along. The soul sound is back with a vengeance and it's happening right here in the Midlands. It's early morning on the set of Function at the Junction. It's a new feature film being shot in Nottingham, all about the soul scene of the 70s. You've got the old clubbers like me, who like, still like the music, and then you've got like a new generation who dig the music too. So it, it is purely because it's, it's, be it's beautiful music. Its writer and its director are both big soul fans and they think it's time everyone else learnt to share their passion. It's a, a classic example of British youth picking up on, on a music that America had largely rejected. America didn't really want this music and British youth taking it and making it their own and creating their entirely their own scene out of it. Look out, but the scene is really kicking back in now in England itself and uh, it, it's sort of rejuvenating the, the real music, as it were, and, and uh, it's sort of uh, uh, undercutting the club scene, and, and it's still got the rave appeal and the sort of high-energy appeal, but real voice, real singers, real songs, you know. And uh, it's, it, it strikes me that it's becoming a la mode. It's, it's going to set a trend, I think, if it catches on. Back in the 70s, the Midland soul scene was thriving. Every Friday and Saturday night, Thousands of young people travel to events across the country. Sometimes they travel hundreds of miles just to get to a soul night at one of the famous clubs in Nottingham, Derby or Stoke-on-Trent. Stoke's most famous club was the Golden Torch. A close second was the Magic Roundabout. One of the original DJs at the Magic Roundabout was Colin Curtis. He took me to what's left of the club, this derelict building in the Potteries town of Burslem. This place just doesn't feel like a happening club, Colin. What was it like back then? Back then it was, it was almost exactly like you see it now, only very dark. Uh, we would come along the corridor here uh, and eventually end up here. But the, the music, the noise, the lights would come through these, uh, these ornate glass uh, <laughs> windows that are still here and, and they've got that inside as well that, that was that was very very much a part of, of, of this particular scene that there were nights that were tucked away because your mainstream club wouldn't really be interested in promoting this so they'd be tucked away in places like this and this this was probably one of the original all-nighters uh, where people would actually stay here till seven and eight in the morning with a breakfast thrown in but the center of the stoke scene was the golden torch here in tunstall you would work your way along the queue here and then as you turned into the street here the, the music would hit you. There's nothing left of the torch these days. It's just a car park. But Colin Curtis remembers when this part of Stoke-on-Trent was alive. 
to the sounds of soul. The torch epitomised everything and, and, and it was one of the original all-nighters that had mass success and, and, and mass coverage um, through the press and also through people travelling from, from all over the UK. It was a Brit down at Trent Bridge, the all-dayers at the Pally in Nottingham, there was all-dayers at Derby, at Tiffany's and I used to love um, not only the music but how friendly people were. There was no hostility or attitude. Everybody was there for one reason, the love of the music. You can get thousands of people together, I mean thousands of people together, and they are dancing within close proximity of each other, and there is never ever any bother. There's never ever any harsh words between people. They are purely and simply there for the music and to enjoy themselves. I mean, the times have changed, yes. There used to be a time when young women could sleep on the floor at the venues and they could put their purses down without fear of anyone touching them. You know, yes, times have changed in retrospect of that, but the music is still as strong and the people's dedication is still as strong. But what was the Northern Soul sound? Where did those tunes come from? The tunes that defined a generation. Northern Soul was based on records produced by the Motown label in Detroit. These were the big stars, the Supremes, the Miracles and the Temptations. But Northern Soul is about their stable mates, singers who never made the Motown TV specials. It's raw soul. I think the beauty of it is it's, uh, it's made by people who mainly weren't stars. They might have had one crack at making a record and then go back to being a waitress or working in a gas station and not realising that this music was, was massive in Britain ten years later. <laughs> Thirty years on from the original Motown sound, a new generation is discovering the music and dancing just like they did at the height of Northern Soul. Hinkley may be a long way from Detroit, but the passion for the music is just as strong. Northern Soul is black American music that very often sounds Motown-esque. It's got the Motown sound, but it's not quite Motown, it's not good enough to be Motown in terms of production quality, but it's got the beat, it's got the vocal harmonies. And very often, it's very badly produced in some cases, but it's got heart and soul. It's a, it's a dance, it is the dance music of the 60s, 70s. And now, many of the original Soul Boys are back on the scene. John Heaney was there when it all started. Now he's chauffeur to the mayor of Derby, and he's still a Northern Soul fanatic. It's the soundtrack to his day. Everybody else was into like Bay City Rollers and. David Bowie and things like that, and you want it to be somewhat different. And uh, I used to have, I used to have a scooter. I used to be into the scooter scene as well, and that more town mob music, soul music, it all intertwined. What are you doing after 30 years, still liking the same music? I like thousands of other people who are in in the late 40s are into this kind of music. To me, it's the sound, it's the music, you know, the black 60s American music. That's what I want to hear. And the Wyking Social Club in Hinkley is the kind of place where John comes to dance when his day's work is over. OK, so it's not Wigan Casino, but Northern fans have been looking forward to this night. It's Hinkley Soul Club's ninth anniversary and the dancers are out in force. And what about the steps we're going to see in here tonight then, John? Well, hopefully I'll teach you a few basic steps so you, you'll get on the dance floor and practice them out and uh, maybe you'll get hooked. And, Let's uh, see then, shall we? Yeah, come on then, we'll go in. fans have travelled from across the Midlands to hear those big tunes one more time. Here you go, Eddie. It's not glamorous, it's not sophisticated, but they're having fun. 
it's like an adrenaline, like an adrenaline junkie. Once you get past that certain point, you're just lost in the music. And it takes you over and you get so engrossed you've been waiting to go to places like this during the week. And once that music, you get the right tempo and the right beat and you're having a good night, you just get carried away with it. Many of the Northern Soul DJs have been there right from the start. Most began as collectors, and after playing their records to friends and fellow enthusiasts, the next step was to take to the decks. Derek Allen is a Northern Soul legend. He's been around since the 70s. Derek's seen off the days when the scene was in the doldrums, and now he's part of the Renaissance. These people are, are sort of an older crowd, so you're not going to get any teenagers in here and spilling the art pints and things like that. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good night where you can come out and have a, have a good time. And this is what's happened to the people. The children have grown up, and so uh, now it, it becomes that they want, to, they want to look around and do something again like they did in the first place. And they, they think, what did we used to do? We went out and we had Northern Soul Nights. Northern Soul still exists, I think, I think virtually everywhere. It ex still exists in Nottingham, Derby, Birmingham. There is an outlet I think you will find almost everywhere. I've never seen such an intense gig guide that, as is available today to go to listen to Northern Soul. If you buy the Togetherness magazine or you buy Blues and Soul, there are gigs absolutely everywhere playing, still playing you know, some of the great music that was played originally uh, on this site. Back on the film set in Nottingham, they're trying to recreate the best days of Northern Soul. The plot involves a seedy club manager, played by John McArdle, trying to rig a dance competition. Have you ever seen this Jake fella before then? Yeah, of course. He only lives around the corner. How come he hasn't been in the club? You had him barred for life, remember? What for? Because I said whoever gets off with him tonight is one lucky bastard. It's going to be a long day on the set, but with a production team full of Northern Soul fans and record collectors, no one's complaining. As a teenager, I used to come here to Rob's Records in Nottingham, looking for old soul. Thousands and thousands of records in here, lots of Northern as well. Hi Rob. Hello, how are you? How you doing, alright? Yes, alright, thanks. Good. After a few Northern tunes, mate. Alright. Oh, got a bit of a list. Yes. Can you uh, see what you've got on these for me? Let's see what I can do. Daryl Banks, Marvin Gaye, Jack Montgomery. Do you want me to look around for them? Yes, please, please yeah. Right, I'll Great. do that. Rob Smith's shop is in Aladdin's cave of vinyl. There are piles of old records everywhere. But Rob, believe it or not, knows where everything is. Yeah, some records can go for anything up to about three or four thousand pounds, really. But uh, there's certainly lots of records now that are in the hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred pound vein. But I was only looking to spend a few quid. I've got the record here. It's a UK stateside original. Right. The bad news is it's priced at twenty-five pounds. I could possibly do it for about twenty-two if you're interested. Okay. All right. Yep. The real collector is a breed apart. He'll go to any extreme to get that elusive Northern Soul single. There's even stories of collectors selling their cars to pay for rare vinyl. People do get drawn in even more so than years ago when there was maybe only one or two boxes of records to loop through. When you go to a gig nowadays, there may be 10 or 15 dealers there with hundreds and hundreds and thousands of singles uh, to actually look through on different labels, all having different values, even today from a pound right up there to three or four thousand pounds for one seven inch single. Always nice to have something that no one else has got, or very few people have got. Jonathan, who's my production manager here at the factory, he had the very first copy of Frank Wilson. It was called Do I Love You? Indeed I Do. Uh, I was fortunate to be offered a, the only copy uh, from a friend of mine, which I had no hesitation on buying. Um, I love the record, both sides of it, even sweeter as the days go by on the other side, which is a ballad. I thought it was a great record. I had an opportunity to buy it and just couldn't say no and as time's gone on, there's only now two copies and um, two, three years ago, that second copy was sold for 15,000 pounds. Slightly more than what I paid for it when I bought it back in, I think it was 78 or 79. There are some rare records that are fantastic. There are some common records that are only a fiver that are wonderful. And you can get them because they were good and they were hits.
and one of the biggest hit makers over the years has been Edwin Starr. This is him during his late 70s disco phase. But most of his back catalogue is true to the old Motown sound. Edwin Starr believes that his success here in England is down to the Northern Soul scene and the UK's love for old Motown sounds. They have great memories connected with the music. They, most of them grew up to it, most of them fell in love to it, most of them met their first girlfriends or first boyfriends to it. You know, there's always some fond memories connected with the Northern Soul Motown sound. In fact, Edwin Starr was so taken with Britain's enthusiasm for his music that he left the US and settled in the Staffordshire town of Tamworth 15 years ago. When the scene started to dry up in 83 is when I decided to come over here to live permanently. Uh, I realized quickly that this is like the last vista. If you can make it here, then you can make it anywhere. A lot of the artists that you are talking about unfortunately, and I do say unfortunately, have passed away and they never got a chance to even see this. They didn't even know that Northern Soul existed. Modern soul singers like Shabazz have now taken the same path as Edwin Starr. Signed to a Midlands label, Shabazz has left his US roots behind and he's launching his career in the UK. He's one of an increasing number of soul singers who've seen the potential of the UK, and especially the Midlands, and they've taken that leap of faith. What makes the connection between the, mo the, the modern soul scene that I'm part of now and the Motown of the past is heartfelt music that's coming from the soul, coming from the gut, coming from your stomach, in a sense, all barriers are let down. You're not thinking about necessarily the money. You're not thinking about the, the business part of it. You're reaching in and you're grabbing a hold of some of those emotions that you've experienced, good and bad, and you're bringing it out and expressing it in such a way that whoever listens to it can't help but feel it. They have to feel it. Hi, Joe, if you can hear me, I want you to do a little bit more with the vocals there. I want to end the lines a little bit more positively. This studio hopes to be the new Motown. Soundtracks in Nottingham has created a stable of producers, writers and singers who they hope will emulate the success of Hitsville, right in the heart of the East Midlands. The idea is to create an instantly recognisable sound and make stars of their young singers. I've left behind the past I found love My vision here is that we will actually build an empire We will bring people in We will create stars, the stars of tomorrow uh, In very much the same way that Barry Gordy did The best thing about Motown is when you hear anything that was recorded by Barry Gordy and you know at Hitsville and all the writers and producers they had it's got a, it's got a feel it's got the tambourine on, on the snare drum and, and, and the bass drum full on the floor going and you know it's a Motown production I want to find a sound like that obviously not not copy the Motown sound but find our own sound our own production style so that when people hear our music and hear our singers and our songs, they know it's coming from a particular part of Nottingham. What we hope to do is create a sound that's unique to the region. And by doing that, obviously that compares to what, what Berry Gordy did and what Motown have done. And that's what we'd like to do, leave a legacy of a music style and an infrastructure that will last for 30 years or even longer. Just up the road on the film set, things are going slowly. Who can come back tomorrow out of you lot? No? Two, three, four. You definitely come in. 
can you get, especially for thir yeah, for tomorrow and Thursday, we need to get 30 extras for Thursday and 30 for tomorrow. Yeah. Brilliant. And you? Uh, yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. Fantastic. And Thursday? Yeah. If you can, we yeah. appreciate it. For the cast and crew, there's hours of waiting around. The big dance scene was supposed to happen this afternoon, but technical hitches have got in the way. The producers, determined to make the film as authentic as possible, are waiting to get the right group of dancers together. Many of them have been recruited from Northern Soul clubs across the Midlands. Thanks largely to the fans of soul music, vinyl is selling better than ever. At this pressing plant in Nottingham, output's doubled since it opened four years ago. As well as pressing records for Midlands artists like Shabazz, they churn out 12 inches for superstars like Janet Jackson. There's something about a crackle and a pop of a piece of vinyl that gives it something. A lot of children have never ever seen a piece of vinyl. And it's one of the biggest expanding industries at the moment, contrary to all belief. We've just had to move from the factory that we've had for the last three years to a place actually three times bigger, just to cope with the demand for vinyl. Many soul fans, it seems, want to hear music the same way their parents did, on vinyl. And this is where many of Chris's records end up. Shops like Too Funky in Leicester. Specialist outlets like this one are now shifting more units than ever, as the appetite for soul music increases. There are a lot of British artists coming onto the scene, especially from the Midlands. It, it crosses over a lot of Asians, a lot of uh, black, a lot of white, you know, everyone's listening to it now. That's how it's going now, so. Very mixed culture as well, yeah. so everyone's like. Everyone's pulling together in the clubs, bars, the community radio stations, stuff like that, you know. So it's really good. <laughs> it's Soul Night at Bonds in Birmingham, and the atmosphere is building. Hundreds of committed soul fans have come to hear the latest vinyl and see some of the Midlands' hottest performers. This is a long way from the Northern Soul Nights in working men's clubs, but the music comes from the same roots. The Motown soul of the... Beverly Brown is one of the brightest new stars in the soul firmament. Despite her humble roots in Smethwick, she oozes sophistication and gives off the aura of someone determined to succeed. Real music is coming back. I think we're crying out for real musicians and real, real talent because I think for far too long, you know, we've been getting away with this computer stuff and this happy-go-lucky, um, non-emotional singing. Do you know what I mean? So I think we're crying out for real talent again, and I think definitely it's coming back. You know, all this hype and everything. You know, there's a matter of time before it all dies out again, and then definitely real music is going to come out. And I'll be there, you know, saying yes, Beverly from Birmingham, still going strong. The Motown stars of 30 years ago would no doubt be surprised to see their legacy here in the Midlands. A thriving scene for new writers and performers and a way of life for thousands of 40-somethings who developed a love for a music that originated half a world away. The Northern Soul scene is healthier than it's been for 20 years. New dancers have joined the old fans to make sure the scene won't fade away for a very long time. Meanwhile, artists like Beverly Brown are making a real impact in clubs across the Midlands. The soul scene's never been so healthy. To mark this resurgence of soul, a film. Take three, take two. It's heading towards its climax, the big dance scene. All the producers can hope for, like the fans, is that rare soul keeps pulling the punters at the box office. Way back in the in, in the late 60s, early 70s, we used to we used to find it funny that there used to be guys walking around the town in which I lived wearing drapes, like the old teddy boys. And the sad thing about it is we have now become those teddy boys. We're probably ridiculous to some people. It's Saturday night and I've got my glad rags on for me 
Sully night, and this is what I've been waiting for all week. I get laughed at by my missus and kids, and uh, but to me, if I was into rock and roll, I'd have rock and roll kit on. I'm a Sully, I'll always be a Sully, and this is what, to me, this is what non souls about. Once you get on the dance floor, this nice slippy dance floor, you, you can spend all night on there. Once you're involved, it is like a drug. It gets into your system and it just won't go away. I'm nearly 50, <laughs> heading that way. Um, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to keep on playing American black music um, to the last. Uh, and there is no other passion for me. I, uh, I have a daytime job that I enjoy, but my main passion is uh, black American music. It will continue to be so until somebody knocks me over. Everybody that was a part of it tries to do anything and everything that they can to keep it alive. And it, it, keeps, it keeps surviving. And that just goes to show you the legacy of the music, that the music is that good, that it just keeps surviving. And say it one more time for Stop Sony! Alex Stop Sony! There is no scene out there other than possibly rock and roll that has survived the test of time as, as well as Northern Soul. We will go until we can't go anymore. But my wife says that unless they start putting wheelchair ramps in, we won't be able to get into a lot of the venues. The chicks are out of sight.